Hi, I'm Bob Mutarelli, and I've been a BERT developer for over seven years now. I hope this video helps you to create interesting BERT reports. Today's developers are constantly asked to access data from different databases, whether it's a legacy database or a brand new data type. This video will show you how you can make a non-standard database as easy to use as any of the out-of-the-box connections. Today's example will include connecting to a pervasive database. Now I'll start off by opening up a report template and just simply adding a new data source and launching the JDBC data source list because pervasive is a JDBC connector. By dropping down the list, I expose the out-of-the-box connections and see that there is no pervasive connection supplied. Next, let's take a look at the driver necessary to access pervasive data. The pervasive install contains a library, PSQL bin, that contains the necessary driver, the jar file. Within that jar file, the pvjdbc2.jar contains the driver class and ultimately the drivers necessary to access the data. So if we were to open up this jar file and examine the contents, we navigate through to the driver class and ultimately the name of the drivers required. Uh, there are actually two drivers in this particular file. One is the com pervasive JDBC v2 driver. The other is the pervasive JDBC pervasive driver. So now that I know where these drivers exist, I can go back into the BERT design environment. Let's go see what we need to do to the development tool itself in order to access pervasive data. So if I were to select new data source, once again, JDBC data sources, the, drop, the driver class dropdown still does not contain any information about pervasive. By using the manage drivers button, I can add and then navigate directly to the jar file that contains those drivers. So the pvjdbc2.jar is now added and available to the design tool. By clicking on the driver list, I can make a quick edit to the two drivers that are now exposed, giving them a pertinent display name. Also providing the appropriate URL template. And at this point you could leave it as is or you can fill in information that is going to be uh, reused over and over. In this case I'll just add the server as local host and the port 1583 as part of the template. I'll do the same thing now for the other driver, display name, and the appropriate URL template. Click OK a few times, and then go back in and relaunch my new data source, JDBC source, drop down my list, and now I have those two pervasive drivers available to me, just like all of the other out-of-the-box connectors. So if I were to select now one of the pervasive drivers, give it a database name. In this case, I'll use the demo data database delivered with the pervasive install, test my connection to see that it works, finish this new data source creation, I can now create a data set off that data source and I'll just perform a simple query like select asterisk from the sample billing table within the demo data database, preview my results and see that I am indeed getting back data. That's all I plan to show today. Hopefully this video helps you add new data sources into your BERT design environment. Thank you.